Now in this video we're going to be talking about transfers. It's a simple easy process and it kind of brings your model to life in a way that you can't really do with hand painting. I've got two different transfer sheets here. The first is from the Baneblade kit and then the second is from Forge World which is the Death Corp of Krieg transfer. So the next thing you need to work out is where you want the transfers to go. I've got a couple of books I use for reference and research. So I've got the two Krieg books, which is Fall of Orpheus and Siege of Rax. And then I've also got the Imperial Armour book featuring all the Imperial Guard tanks. Now they both have the photo references and they've got these kind of technical diagrams. And technical diagrams are really good because it gives you a few different ideas of um, where you can place transfers. So I basically spent all last night pondering over different positions of where these transfers to go using some inspiration from those books. I temporarily just stuck them on using blue tack to give me a rough idea of where everything should be and kind of a ratio of number of transfers to each side. It's quite important that I don't overload the tank with too many but at the same time, if you did, you can then weather them back so you could scuff one almost completely off. So I tend to do that on, say, the one which is on the hatch here. Um, I've got two skull motifs. One is with the axes, and then that's just the skull on its own. So this one, I'm not sure I want to replicate um, those both of them. So what I might do is I'm going to put all the others down and then this one at the last minute I'll work out if it's worth adding on. As you can see there's none at the fronts. There's a little uh, section here where you could add one on. I've decided not to for now because when I've got the bulldozer blade on I'm going to have a large aquila on the bulldozer. So zooming slightly on this little section, I've got the word Krieg that I want to put down on this scroll. Obviously it's quite important that I paint up that scroll design first. So I've just put a base layer down of Rhinoxide. I'm then going to do a quick um, wash with Agrax Earthshake and Null and Oil just to give it a slight bit of depth. Now it's quite important to do that before you do the transfer because you obviously won't be able to paint underneath the transfer. What I can do, however, afterwards is do the highlight just to do some sort of edge highlighting on the scroll just with a slightly lighter brown colour. So I'll do that at a much later stage when I actually paint up the, I don't want to say Aquila because it's a skull design, um, but that little motif just there. Now this little section is quite a nice little design piece. Um, so when you're putting your transfers down, bear in mind not to kind of crowd this area too much with transfers, just because you want your eye to be drawn to this little section. Oddly, in all the kind of Imperial Armour books and the technical diagrams, uh, that doesn't exist and is actually just left plain and people put their own transfers down on there. So that would be really good. The only downside, it would be quite difficult to cut all of that plastic away to do that. And again, as I mentioned, try to get the right balance between the number of transfers around the tank. So don't try and crowd too many transfers in together. Um, you'll see I've kind of locked several transfers together where I've used numbering and the Aquila or the word Krieg and Aquila, which I can show you a bit better once I put the transfers down. And on the back, I've just put a few transfers down just to try and make this uh, quite blank area a bit more visually interesting. So there's a few different techniques for putting the transfers on the model. Uh, the first one is to just put like a base down of gloss varnish first. So this gives you a nice and smooth area for applying the transfer. Use obviously water to put the transfer onto the model and then use another kind of gloss coat to seal it in. Now, the reason why that's been recommended is to just help um, kind of seal the design into the model and so the actual kind of cut out of the transfer is as hidden as possible. Often I don't think this is really needed so I tend to just put the transfer straight on with water and then I use um, Lamian medium to seal it in afterwards. Now the problem with a gloss varnish is that you end up with a very shiny area of your tank while the rest of it's quite matte. 
So if you have an airbrush, you can use your Lamian medium and you can actually spray that on and as if by magic that dulls it into a matte finish, making it kind of seamless with the rest of the tank. Now if you don't have an airbrush, you could use the Purity Seal Spray and that should do the exact same job. So I've just put on my transfers. I want to just run you through uh, a few of them to show you sort of my thought process behind the placement of them and which ones I've actually used. So all of these transfers are from the Krieg transfer sheet from Forgeworld. Um, these are actually two separate transfers and what I've done is a lockup, which is where you take two separate um, transfers and you then put them together to kind of form one. So the first one at the top is this small Aquila and then I've matched that up with the tank numbering. Now the tank numbering I've used on the opposite side as well to give it some symmetry. On a lot of my kind of Chimera chassis I tend to place them down here just below this little unit here. But I thought for this one it would actually work better up here with an Aquila because I kind of like to have at least pretty much one Aquila depending on you know the front side and back. Here I've just used the word Krieg and I've added it to that little ribbon. So on the back you can see I've gone for two different tank names and numbering. So I've gone for 84 and 85 to try and keep things a little consistent. Uh, and then I've gone for Honor and Retribution as my two names for the tanks, which I think is quite suitable. As you can see, there's actually a slightly different panel design between the two different sides. So you've got to be careful where you place them. So for example, I've got a transfer here because there's no inner panel design, whereas I couldn't place it on this one because it's got a paneling in the way. So on this side, I've got the name again and the number, which is identical to the one on the other side. I've just shifted the position. So the two skull designs I actually took from the Baneblade Super Heavy transfer kit, which was this and up here. So I thought for the Grenadiers kind of being the forefront elite troops are storming across the trenches and being kind of a high casualty assault unit, it seemed quite fitting to go for a kind of skull and crossbone style design. Um, I really sort of ummed and ahed about where to position it in terms of these panels. I thought actually putting it there would be a bit more interesting. And then I noticed there was a slight little um, feature up here on the ammo for the auto cannon, and thought I would add in the skull there as well. Now it just gives it a nice bit of um, repetition in the design and it kind of keeps things consistent going across both of the hull and the turret. It would have been nice to have had one of these skull designs on the other side, but it just didn't seem to really work. This side's got quite a lot of transfers on it, so what I will do is I'll kind of weather these back a bit so some of them will be barely visible, which will stop the transfers overpowering the overall design. And just in the kind of corner section, I've done another lockup, this time with the word Krieg and a small Aquila. There's one last transfer, and that was a kind of tiny little numbering unit which I added to the hatch. So I was going to do one more transfer and that was to add a similar numbering there but to the back of the turret. I liked the idea that the turrets had their own identification numbers. However, in the end I ended up not going with it because it just felt like there was too many transfers. So the view from the back, you can already see quite a few different number of transfers and I sort of thought it would just overpower it by having too much if I added that extra one in, even though I liked the idea of it. So the transfers on the second tank are in the exact same place. Uh, I've kept things completely consistent. The only difference was the sort of name and numbering because obviously these are meant to be unique. So these transfers are looking a bit too new and shiny. Uh, I want a kind of rough, ready and aged look on my tank. So I need to kind of scuff these transfers back so it looks like it's revealing the grey of the paintwork of the tank below. So what I'll be doing is I'll be taking a kind of a sponge, which is like my tank foam, and I'll be dabbing it with some Eschen grey, and I'll be applying it on top of the transfers. So this will create sort of an illusion that it's actually chipped off and you're seeing the paint below. You need to be quite careful though, because obviously there's several different tones of grey within this that I've done with the airbrush. So by applying kind of solid blobs of grey from a sponge, it can sometimes make it look a bit odd. 
that as you go through the process that I'll be weathering the tank more that will kind of hide those noticeable effects. So I've done my transfers all it took was just taking a bit of my trusty tank foam and as you can see I just tore a little bit off so I just put a, dipped it in a little bit of paint and then I just dabbed it on some paper a bit like dry brushing until you only see a little bit of paint coming off then you know it's ready to apply and then you can just sponge it on quite carefully onto the tank. As you can see I've done it both using brown there and the base coat of the Eshrin Grey up here. Now the kind of the key tactic here is to not overdo it but then not also do not enough so it's just a sort of fine balance between the two. As you can see I've kind of focused more on the bottom because this is where it's going to get more weathered than anywhere else and again same for the top section where this hatch is going to see quite a lot of action so that's going to get weathered a lot more than say some of the others. As you can see I've tried to focus my weathering kind of from this direction because as it's driving forwards chips and stones are going to all be kind of coming from this track area. So I've weathered the transfers and now I need to weather the rest of the tank. I'm going to use my airbrush to apply a small bit of paint around all the rivets and kind of where the joins are between certain sections and panels. So that's it for this video. Please do like and subscribe. Keep an eye out for the next one and in the meantime, take care.